Pastor Nancy, recording for Sunday, April 11th. And you may be watching this in the morning or in the afternoon or the evening. It's the second Sunday of Easter. We um, have um, one announcement today. Uh, a beloved uh, community member of Washburn, Isabel Moe, died uh, this past week and her, her funeral will be sometime in the summer. And she was, a, I, I can't remember now, 101 or 102, and beloved by many. Her husband, Harold Moe, was a member at Messiah of the Choir and Ludafisk Maker, and um, we think fondly of them and pray for um, comfort for all who are grieving that loss and so many other losses. Please join me in a call to worship. The word of life spoke, reminding us not to be afraid. The word of life reached out to touch us in moments we are almost overwhelmed with uncertainty. The word of life walked out of death's dread tomb through the days in which we live so we might walk with hope. Let us pray. Dear tomb emptier, just as you raised Jesus out of the shadows and fears of that lonely grave, so you come to call us forth from our fears to fling open the doors of our hearts which have been locked by this pandemic. Breather of peace, come and strengthen us with your gentle grace so we may offer peace and serve all who need their hearts mended. God in community, holy in one, be with us. Call us and hear us when we pray. Amen. Again, this liturgy, like many I use, was written by Tom Schumann, retired pastor. Thank you. And now a call to reconciliation. We are reminded of God's gracious forgiveness, and God continues to offer us new life 
We confess our fears and our doubts to the one who is eager to make us whole. Dear God, in the brain fog of these weary days, we're not only having trouble finding words of hope in life, we have even more trouble turning our words into actions. Forgive us, God of love. Fill us with healing and grace as we offer our brokenness to you, that we might be made whole. This we pray as we proclaim Jesus Christ as our Lord and our God. We take a moment of silence. This is the good news of old, as well as fresh as today. God comes into our lives to lead us out of fear's shadows into the life God offers us. This is the word we have heard and the grace which is ours. God is faithful, forgiving us and making us whole. Thanks be to God. Amen. And now we'll hear Jack Gunderson sing, When Peace Like a River. And the chorus is, um, it is well with my soul. Thank you so much, Jack. And uh, our gospel lesson today is from the Gospel of John, chapter 20, verses 19 through 31. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But Thomas said, unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them this time. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then Jesus said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said, Have you believed because you've seen? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing, you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the bulletin cover has this, Peace be with you. Let us pray. Dear God, we want more peace and calm in our lives. We know you entered a room with fearful disciples and uttered, peace be with you. Is this still your message to us for today? Do you still wish for us to have peace in our lives? By the power of your Holy Spirit, show us, answer us, tell us. In your name we pray, amen. The title of today's sermon is um, A Play on Words, No God, No Peace. And the word no is spelled N-O, no God, no peace. Uh, comma, no God, K-N-O-W, no God, no peace. <laughs> God is our source of peace. We heard that today. Rather than 
where were you when I was getting hung on the cross? Jesus just said, peace. Remember last week we talked about reconciliation, not retaliation. And here Jesus demonstrates it. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Knowing God really means, you know, how do you get to know anyone? Know God, know peace. We get to know God by spending time with God, by worshiping together like we're doing right now. This helps us know God. And peace is coming and will come. And I think it sounds simple, but it will take a lifetime. But I want to focus my life on knowing God and knowing Jesus and knowing the Holy Spirit. And I invite you to, to join me in that lifelong journey. Deeper and deeper shall we go to get to know God. So if the result might be more peace, that's good. But what else does it cost to get to know God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit? Well, it does cost our lives. We are asked to die to our ego-driven uh, self that's kind of separate and to be unified with God, die to my own wishes and needs as a kind of a false self, die to that. Again, I want to do it. How about you? I want to die to myself, whatever it even means, you know, die to self. I will get to know God in a deeper way the more I jump in and, and surrender. No God, no peace. Are you in for that too? Yes, I trust you're saying yes. You wanna die to yourself too. Dying to our own wishes to get to know God. Jesus says, um, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, dying is part of the faith journey. So following Jesus is the message today, no God, no peace. And we heard Jesus say, peace be with you. What does that mean? Peace be with you. What does it mean in modern language? I want to share something with you that I shared in 2012 and 2014. Maybe I've shared it other times. A list, it's called Signs and Symptoms of Peace. What does peace look like? And this is from an anonymous source, but quoted in a book called Clergy Burnout by Fred Lair, L-E-H-R. Could it be that our pursuit of the peace of God, could it be that as we pursue Jesus and get to know him, that the signs of peace might um, become more obvious in us? I don't know, but I, wanted, I, I believe the answer is yes. No God and no peace. What is peace here? Are, um, Ten um, modern day definitions of what peace could be. And I, I agree with them. We'll have more spontaneity and less actions based on fear. 1 John 4.18 says, God's love casts out fear. Knowing God is knowing love and our fear does diminish. Greater ability to enjoy each moment. To have joy, the joy of the Lord is our strength, Nehemiah 8.10. Number three, peace could be defined as a loss of interest in judging myself and others. Jesus says, judge not lest you be judged. Peace could mean a loss of interest in judging ourselves and others. And a loss of interest in trying to figure other people out. Other people. Figuring them out could take a lot of time. And Jesus says, look at the log in your own eye, not the speck in someone else's. Knowing Jesus gives us peace and helps us um, worry less. In Philippians chapter 4, verse 6, don't worry about anything, but pray about everything. And this sense of peace will come. Number six, as we focus on Jesus and that peace comes, we will see a transformation in us that we're, we'll, our knee jerk will become uh, more grateful, more filled with gratitude. Number seven, contented feelings of connectedness. As we die to ourselves, this is a paradox. As I let go of needing it my way, as I die to myself and say, Jesus, your will, um, 
I believe that will help us connect more with others. They don't have to prove and get their approval. Just die to self, die to being first and looking good, <laughs> right? If we die to all that, I think we will be able to connect with others more and with nature. As we focus on Jesus, number nine, we are more apt to just let go, letting things happen rather than forcing them. And number 10, as we focus on Jesus, we will have more times of giving and receiving love. I went through that list rather quickly, and um, both of our church websites will have this sermon, um, the text, if you want to print that out. Ten um, signs and symptoms of peace. More on peace from John, Jesus' words in John chapter 14, verses 27. Peace I give to you, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives, give I to you. What a theme in today's message. He walks in the first time seeing his disciples after the crucifixion and resurrection. And his desire is to, to give us peace and the Holy Spirit. Peace I give to you, my peace I leave with you, not as the world gives, give I to you. Some of you know the devotional Jesus Calling from May 1st, as if Jesus were talking to us about peace. As you give yourself more and more to a life of constant communion with me, you find that you have less time for worry. Thus, you are freed to let my spirit direct your steps, enabling you to walk the path of peace. More time focusing on Jesus helps the worry at least lessen. Probably it won't all go away, but it will lessen. I, I quoted some um, material from that book, Clergy Burnout, and in another chapter, there was a spiritual life survey with 14 questions, and each question listed four possible answers. And they were jumbled up, but one of the four answers is described as what life looks like when we live in the Holy Spirit. So there's, I want to share that with you too. Probably you'll want to print this sermon out because it's very content heavy. But what else might the peace of Jesus look like? How would our approach to life be if we're dwelling in Jesus' peace? Life is a grace gift from God to be enjoyed and used for others. God made us for God's purposes. Our approach to life is this is a gift from God. I humbly accept it. Prayer is an opportunity not only to put our concerns before God, but it's this opportunity for a closer relationship. And prayer is this opportunity to say thank you. And it's uh, praying constantly is that dialogue. God help me. God, I'm having the worst day in my entire life. I did everything wrong. That's prayer. And almost automatically, the worst day in your entire life will get a little better. It might still be an awful day, but prayer connects us. The world temporal stage, the world, our, our worldview is that it, that it is, does include tragedy and comedy, the good and the bad. That's our worldview. There's good and bad in the world. But what is the world? What is a worldview that Jesus wants us? This is the place we're here to seek justice, to witness to the gospel, to celebrate in quiet joy that Jesus is with us. So our worldview is I'm here to pursue justice. And some say, if you want peace, work for justice. Love is building each other up. What is love? It's building each other up more than self-sacrifice. It's a deep sense of personal commitment, even unto death. Love is community building and wanting to care for each other. Who is the Holy Spirit? And these are ways of, these are definitions that, that show us what it looks like to live life filled with the Spirit. The Spirit is God active in our lives, guiding us. And we grow in confidence as we day after day say, God help, God help, God help. And we start saying, I think, I think God helped me. 
<laughs> the Holy Spirit desires that we live in community, in a church family, and that we gather together and we rebuke those powers that want to divide us. And we stay as a community. As we grow in Christ, the Holy Spirit wants us to grow in grace and maturity. And in our relationships, the Holy Spirit wants us to have reality, not live in la-la land, to know that suffering is, all, is a part of maybe almost all relationships, yet we still choose to be related to people rather than going it alone. What is a Holy Spirit uh, agenda? And our agenda in life is to, to be obedient to God's plan over any human plan and to serve one another because that's our calling. The Christian community, you and I are called to be together solidly in Christ's love and have a mutual commitment to enhance each other. And as pastor, our job is to equip the saints. Equip. So when one pastor leaves and another comes, you aren't dependent on the pastor. You are equipped. We see ourselves, how do we view, what's our, how do we see ourselves? We're heirs to God's kingdom. We're vessels of grace. We're people who seek to be healing, healers in an ailing world. What kind of self-worth does God want us to have? We are accepted and acceptable. It's another force that pulls us down and, and calls us names and calls us not worthy. The Holy Spirit wants us to see ourselves the way God sees us, accepted and acceptable by God's grace. And how do we see the Lord's Supper? That is Christ's real presence, creating a community of faith. The Lord's Supper, whether we have it together or virtually, it pulls us together in mystery and moves us to sacrifice for others. On the night in which he was betrayed, Jesus took bread and broke it, and he fed his, his disciples, and he feeds us. Peace be with you means a lot. I think it means wholeness and growing in Christ and all of these ideas that I've given you. My peace I give to you, not as the world gives, give I to you. I want us to just meditate as you hear the next song, Dona Nobis Pachum, which means give us peace. You might even want to play it twice and enjoy this song sung by Jack. We are singing about peace. We're praying about peace. And I hope you would join me in um, acknowledging it's a lifelong journey following Jesus. I don't think we ever arrive. There's a little time for you to think about which bullet meant the most to you as I was talking about peace. Because I think the one that means the most to me is take your worst day where everything goes wrong or your friend's worst day Start there, and what, does, what difference does it make as you dwell in Christ and pray? What difference does it make when you're having your worst day? I hope you're answering that question in your heart. I like the idea that on my worst day, I'm never alone. And usually the worst day includes me screwing up in some way. I, I hurt someone's feelings. That's always so hard, isn't it? When you were rude or careless or not thinking. <laughs> those, are, those, those are qualities of a worst day. Or if someone was rude and careless and not thinking toward you. Jesus is probably closer than ever and we have a choice. Of course, it might be easy to thank God on the good days, but on those really tough days, say, dear Jesus, it's so hard. Give me your peace. Give me your will. Holy Spirit, come. Give us peace.
Amen. We'll now celebrate the Lord's Supper. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, broke it, and gave thanks, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Our Lord gives us a meal and a prayer. Let us together pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. This is the Lord's table. God is our host and all are welcome. You may serve yourself. If you're with someone, you might want to serve each other. The body of Christ given for you and the body of Christ given for me. Amen. And the blood of Christ shed for you and the blood of Christ shed for me. Amen. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you so that you can go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Ah, we're going to have a sending blessing. Um, but right before the sending blessing, this is such a holy time when we're together. I want to give you a little bit of silence and pray Pray however you wish. We're just going to have a moment of silence. Receive this blessing. We go forth walking in the light of God. We go to share the good news of life to a world which is struggling with the pandemic. We go forth serving in the light of Christ. We go to unlock the doors of fear and to bring peace to everyone in the shadows. Let's go forth living in the light of the spirit. We go to share healing with the broken. We go to be a community to the lonely by the grace of God. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. I thought of one more announcement. The Northwest Synod of Wisconsin is having their Synod Assembly this week. We didn't even have one last year, but this year we're having it. But it's remote. It's by, um, it's, uh, I, yes, it's by Zoom for those who are Assembly um, representatives, two from First Lutheran, two from Messiah, and myself, so five of us. First Lutheran is Ken Bodine and John Hove, and Messiah is Tom Mitchell and Karen Novacek. But anyone, anybody can watch and um, go to the Synod website, Northwest Synod of Wisconsin website for details. Thursday, this week, the 15th of, no, of April from 6.30 to 8, and then Saturday, April 17th um, from 8.30 to 4. And you can take part and watch which probably could be kind of fun. And there's some excellent resolutions that we will be um, discussing. So please enjoy the website. And if at all possible, go to those justice resolutions and watch the movies. They're short, like five to seven minute videos. Just fantastic. So I hope you can watch them. God bless you now. Goodbye. <laughs>